afternoon. Had a couple of problems in the patch of late and I thought I'd just bring you along and show you what I think some of them are and how I'm going to treat them and another one is a question I want to ask um, gardeners out there if they have any idea, pick your brain so to speak. So to begin with the first problem we've had is russet mite. Now this here has affected our tomato. I don't know how well it's going to show up but what we're getting is a bit of a bronzing of the stem. Um, they're a little mite, a very very small mite, less than a millimetre in size and they cause this bronzing and tend to affect the fruit as well. Um, this black Russian has had a little bit come up the stem. Um, you can see it on the flower heads here. The flower heads have actually dropped off and it's slowly advancing its way all the way to the top of the plant. Uh, right up the top here, the, the growth is still pretty fresh and looks good, but just below it, um, I can start to see speckles of the brown come through. So probably see it a little bit better on this tomato down here. This is our KY1 and you can probably make out the bronzing that we're getting there and it's starting to affect the fruit as well. Just over the side here though, these fruit are looking fine and so are the branches. We're getting a little bit of bronzing or a few spots happening there. Also have the same thing affecting some of our capsicum, so I'll just go over and show you that as well. So these are our bullshorn capsicum. These are grown from save seed and they've also had a bit of an attack from the mites, I think. Um, down on the stem, I don't know if you can make it out, but there is a bit of a bronzing on some of the stem there. Um, I think it could be the russet mite or at least another mite of some description has caused the leaves to be deformed. We've also had an aphid attack on here as well, so I think it's just been caned by a couple of different pests in the patch. What I did to combat it here was spray it with a liquid soap and neem spray, and as you can see, the new foliage coming through is looking a lot cleaner. What neem does is it um, interferes with the hormone receptors of the insect, and as it goes from um, stage to stage in a life cycle, it stops them from occurring and it pretty much will knock them dead. Doesn't kill them off straight away but it does get to them in the end so I think by the look of the new growth it is you know having some sort of a positive effect this afternoon I'm going to come down and spray them again and also nip off some of these older infected leaves um, just to see if that helps it out um, all the infected leaves I snip from plants like this whether they've been sprayed or not just goes into the general refuse bins that get taken away by council I don't want to compost them and don't want them to go back through the veggie patch The other problem we're having is a little bit more insidious, I think. Um, I spoke to Annette McFarlane, she's a bit of a gardening guru down here in Australia. I'll put a link in the description below to her website. And she suggested that it could possibly be a viral um, infection. I mean, she, she couldn't tell by photos over the net, and I don't blame her for not giving me a proper diagnosis. But uh, after reading up on it further, I have a feeling she may be correct. She suggested we chop off the growth and see what comes through after the fact. So what I did was chop off the old growth, treated the whole barrel, the little potato barrel I'm about to show you with the neem spray, and then wait to see what the new growth did, and it's not too promising. The old growth was very gnarly looking, uh, it almost looked like little ferns uh, just trying to unfurl themselves. So it wasn't the best looking plant, there was definitely something wrong. Down here is what the new growth is doing. Pretty much all the same sort of thing again. Um, the leaves are curling over as soon as they're coming out of their ground. So I have a feeling it is a viral infection. The good thing from what I've read though is um, most viruses won't stay in the soil. They're pretty much well locked into the plant itself. They're transferred from plant to plant either by white fly, mites or aphids. So what I think has happened is some of the tomatoes got infected early on in the season. I lost a whole heap of seedlings, heirloom seedlings I'd planted out and they've transferred to the old uh, potatoes, tomatoes and eggplants in the patch. What I'm going to have to do is, is actually pull the spuds from this barrel and dispose of them and this barrel is actually chockers full of Composting worms, have a bit of a dig around down here. Oh, sorry, matey. Um, there's chockers full of composting worms. It's basically a no dig barrel made up of hay, uh, manure, and some worm casting. So I'm just going to leave this be as a, a bit of a worm barrel. Um, it's sitting right next to another worm barrel there. It's not going to go to waste, it just means I've got a worm farm I wasn't planning on having. The other plant that I think has been infected with it is the eggplant. It's also a member of the Solanaceae family. Um, as you can see, I've chopped it off. I've chopped him off the infected bit, given him a good spray with neem. But I think the new growth is still suffering a bit of that leaf curl. I don't know if you can make that out down in there. So 
I'll see what happens with that leaf. It if it develops into a gnarly curled looking leaf, the whole plant's going to come out. No, no point wasting my time with it. So I can only blame myself really for this. Uh, I really should have kept on top of the white fly aphid and mite problem and given the garden a bit of a spray a little bit more regularly. So it's just one of those live and you learn um, situations. But I've got some spare ginger and turmeric looking for bed space. So I might pop some ginger in here or turmeric. Um, if this one goes to pot, we'll be able to tell in a day or so. So yeah, no garden bed will be uh, wasted. I'm just going to use plants that aren't affected by these insects. So just back in the greenhouse now and I just wanted to show you this yakon. Um, this is a yakon, it's a bit of a feral piece of the yakon tuber that sprouted from the barrel that was grown in last year and as you can see it's rather a spectacular looking plant. It's got a little bit of insect damage down here. Um, we still get grasshoppers in the insect proof house. <clears throat> Don't know how that happened, but as you can see, this plant looks really healthy. What I wanted to show you was the two IBC wicking beds out the front that are planted out with this yakon. Uh, there is some, definitely something amiss out there, so we'll just nip out the front quickly. Just out the front here, we have the other yakon bed, and as you can see, while the plant is still growing nicely, nice and tall, putting off little side branches and shoots down the bottom there. These yakon leaves just aren't forming correctly. Um, down in the crown here you can see that they pretty much all end up with a brown off burnt rim or burnt tip. Um, pretty much all from the time they emerge and it ends up creating these cupped or a cupped effect with the leaves. Now I've just brought my pH meter out the front. We'll just stick that in the ground near the roots of the plant. And as you can see, the pH is pretty much all in the desired range. I'll put it in a few other places. Pretty much all the same again. And one more just over the edge here. And yep, pretty much all in the same range again. So there's not a pH problem with the soil. Uh, we have a watermelon growing in there. We have three or four watermelons on, so I don't think there's a nutrient lacking. In fact, this bed here has probably about five or six of these large Jaredale pumpkins on them. So there's definitely enough nutrients in the bed. I don't think that it's the nutrients being robbed from the bed that is causing this problem either because the, the cupping of the leaves happened as, pretty much all as soon as the plants went in. So there you go, there's a bit of a look at what's going on in the patch, a uh, couple of the problems we've got. I'm pretty sure I can knock the mite infestation on the head, um, so those tomatoes should be able to bounce back, the same with those capsicums. So while I'm a bit miffed that we're going to lose those potatoes for this crop, um, I'm quite content to let the worms have their, their way with the manure and the um, loosened hay in those barrels and make us up some worm casting, so it's not really going to be a great loss. Um, but as for the Yakon, if anyone has any idea whatsoever um, with that one, I'd really appreciate a bit of a uh, heads up. Um, it's got me slightly confused. Those beds have been well fed and the pH is fine so yeah a bit of a mystery to me so once again thanks to Annette for pointing me in the right direction I know you couldn't do a diagnosis over the internet a bit a little bit hard to do that um, but thank you very much and I had a bit of a read up on it and thanks to Dave as well while he was around the other day um, he started me on the right path and yeah it could have been a viral problem so thank you very much people um, so yeah, I will pretty much will leave it there. So if you do have any suggestions as what could be plaguing the um, Yakon, I'd really like to know. Pop it in the comments section down below. As always, any other comments, questions or suggestions, you can pop them down there in that comment section and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you're all having fun in the garden and if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you keep them warm. So have a great one and take it easy. Catch ya.